there are some scriptures that have been especially confusing to me, for how it was being taught because it just didn't sit right with me. But until I could explain it better, I kept quiet in my ignorance. Now, as I have searched the scriptures, and spent time with the Holy Spirit, I have answers to some of those verses that has been troubling me. I was troubled about how the phrase, the kingdom of God, is being used. And I found in some cases, Jesus spoke of himself as the kingdom of God, which is the reason for this study. So, let's get started. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, there's a couple of things here. The kingdom of God is spoken of, as having a male gender, as conferred upon it by the word, his. And his, has reference to the characteristic of righteousness, as ascribed to the behavior of a person, or people, and not to things. The word, and, is also a point of interest here. It can mean, also, or it can mean, even. It brings together the phrase, the kingdom of God, as equal to, even, the same as, his righteousness. So, the kingdom of God, is speaking of the person of Jesus, because righteousness is not ascribed to a thing. And we should seek after him first for his righteousness to be credited to us, and after that, God will see that all of our other needs are met. It is like me saying, These are my eyes, and, my sight. Or these are my eyes. Even, my sight. Or these are my eyes, also, my sight. The act of my seeing is directly related to my eyes. Likewise, his righteousness is directly related to Jesus, who here is being spoken of as, the kingdom of God. Let's look at another, example. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt, the kingdom of God is come upon you. Okay, let's say this verse, backwards, to understand that Jesus is speaking of himself, as the kingdom of God. It would read, The kingdom of God is come upon you, if I, by the finger of God, am casting out devils from you. Therefore, if the power of God is operating on you, then, the person operating the power, is also representing the attributes of the kingdom of God, here, present on earth. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. After Jesus was baptized of John, he was led by the Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted forty days of the devil. When that was accomplished without error, he came back into the city saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. The word, hand, means, approach. Here. And ready. In other words, Jesus is saying, I have now left the wilderness, and am now approaching my community, letting you know I am here, and I am ready to do the work of bringing the kingdom of God to you, with signs and wonders, and miracles. In short he is saying, The kingdom of God has arrived today, in me, repent and believe the words I am saying. Do you remember this exchange Jesus had with the Pharisees, saying, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. When the Pharisees demanded of Jesus, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them saying, It does not come with observation. In other words, you will not see a physical kingdom coming in power to rule upon the earth. Jesus is actually saying, because of your unbelief, the kingdom of God is invisible to you. You cannot see it, it is within you. Another word, for the word, within, is. Here with. Among. Together with. 
and positioned alongside of. Jesus is saying, I am the kingdom of God, standing right here with you, remaining among you, and alongside you, but due to your unbelief, I cannot be observed by you. For seeing you cannot see. And hearing, you cannot hear. He is as an optical illusion to them, which prevents them from seeing the truth. This is an optical illusion, showing at the same time, both a beautiful young woman, and an ugly old woman. Let me show you first, the ugly old woman. In the color purple, you see her baggy eye. In the color red, you see her mouth. In the color pink, you see her huge nose. And in the color green, you see her extended chin. All surrounded by a brown fur coat, and a white scarf over her head, and a feather in her hair. Now, let me show you the beautiful young woman. The beautiful young woman, is looking to the side. The color yellow, is the eyelash of her eye. The color green, is her small nose. The color purple, is her well-rounded chin. The color maroon, is her ear. And the color blue, is her neck. All surrounded by a brown fur coat, and a white scarf on her head, and a feather in her hair. Two different images, being expressed at the same time. Likewise, the same can be said of Jesus. If you believe on him, you can see that he is the Son of God, and equipped with the power of the kingdom of God, to do the works of God, here on earth. Or if you are an unbeliever, you will see him as just a man, who is possessed by the devil, who is able to do signs and wonders. So, by their own unbelief, Jesus was disguised from them, and the kingdom of God was unable to operate upon them. Now, what do you make of this statement Jesus made, concerning the kingdom of God? Scripture says, Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here, which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. When Jesus comes in his kingdom, he will come in his glory, or shining as light. Jesus said that some of them standing in his presence, which included his disciples, would not see death before they were blessed with seeing the coming of the kingdom of God. Now, how did he accomplish that? As we have said, when Jesus comes in his kingdom, he will come in his glory, and as a shining light. When Jesus took Peter, James, and John, who represented the some who would see the kingdom of God before they tasted death, he took them into a high mountain, and they received a vision of him in his glory, and shining brighter than any light. Here Jesus himself is the representation of the kingdom of God in light. Scripture says, and after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Jesus is the power to execute the good will of the kingdom of God, upon undeserving sinners, that believe. Jesus is the architect of the kingdom of God, and the operator of the kingdom of God, and the means that keeps it together. So, while he walked the streets of Jerusalem, the kingdom of God was at hand. And when he performed miracles upon the people, the kingdom of God has come upon them. And when the people rejected him, they also were rejecting the coming of the power of the kingdom of God. So, in the stricter sense of scripture, the kingdom of God is the person of Jesus, but there is a physical kingdom of God also, and we should get the meaning from the text. Now, this next verse is speaking of, the coming of the actual physical kingdom of God. Scripture says, There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and yourselves thrust out. When Jesus returns at his second coming, he will be bringing the new Jerusalem, the kingdom of God with him. And it will set down and increase the area where the current Jerusalem is. And at that time, 
the resurrected believers, and the raptured believers, will become residents there. And all the unbelieving Jews that remain in the land, out from the tribulation will be escorted out, and for this there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a repeat in the end of times, of something that happened in the beginning of time. Can you guess what it is? If you remembered when Adam and Eve were escorted out of the garden, you would be correct. At that time, there was a holy place on earth, the Garden of Eden, where the unholy could not reside. Likewise, there will be a holy place on earth again, at the return of Jesus, where the unholy will not be able to reside, and they will be escorted out of the area, by his holy angels. Now, back to Jesus, who himself possessed the attributes of the kingdom of God. Jesus came to his own, causing the kingdom of God to be at hand, inside himself. But they knew him not. Therefore, the kingdom of God was taken from them, because they rejected him, who also possessed the kingdom. If you want to accept Jesus, the one who is able to save you, and the only one who possesses the kingdom of God. Tell God. I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Tell God. I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God. I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God. I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then at that day, Jesus will raise you up, to be a citizen in the kingdom of God, which he possesses. Thanks for watching. The presence of Jesus in the land of Israel, caused the kingdom of God to be at hand, and ready to be implemented had they received him. But they rejected him, and thereby rejected his kingdom also. At his second coming, they will receive him, and by receiving him, they will gain the kingdom also. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye, and believe the gospel. Amen.